Hello. This is a hundred questions about the inconsistencies and plot holes of the movie, Madam Web. 1. Wouldn't Ezekiel Sims instantly be a suspect if he was the only one to return from his expedition team of well-known researchers and scientists? 2. Wouldn't they be able to breed the spiders and make enough for everyone? Or at least clone them? 3. How did baby Cassie leave the Peruvian jungle? 4. Did Spider Jesus escort Cassie all the way back home? 5. Did Spider Jesus know Cassie's mother or where she lived or who to take baby Cassie to? 6. Shouldn't Cassie, a Peruvian citizen by birth and shouldn't even have U.S. citizenship? 7. How does Cassie have legal documents to live and work in the U.S.? 8. Who raised Cassie? 9. Why did Cassie choose to be an EMT, especially if she's antisocial and introverted? 10. What did Ezekiel do with the spider he stole? 11. How did Ezekiel become rich and powerful? 12. How old is Ezekiel supposed to be? Assuming he was maybe 25 in 1973, he'd be 55 in 2003, and maybe 60-65 by the time the Spider-Woman trio kill him. He never looks remotely that old. 13. Why hasn't he harnessed the spider power to himself after 30 years? 14. Why hasn't he mastered his spider powers after 30 years? Even Peter Parker didn't get to be Spider-Man for that long. 15. Why is he evil even before the reoccurring nightmares? 16. Why did he need to kill the NSA lady? Couldn't he have just used kidnap her instead of the lady he hired? 17. Why is NSA lady even carrying all of her work equipment to a night at the theater? 18. According to women, their purses are empty for things they aren't going to use that night. So why was NSA lady even carrying all that stuff with her after work? 19. Why wouldn't Ezekiel just hire a sketch artist and private detective to find the girls, especially since he's rich? 20. How does CCP-level citywide surveillance technology exist in New York City 2003? that doesn't even exist in real life 2023. Wouldn't using a sketch artist than a 3D artist to recreate the girls' faces digitally have made more sense than some goofy brain scanning technology in 2003? And why feel the need to de-age them when the girls don't even look older in his dreams? And they were wearing masks in his dreams, meaning how he'd know their faces anyway. 21, if he has some psychic powers, why couldn't the movie just have it to where after Ezekiel sees the girls in real life the first time by, say, hiring a detective or just tracking them down themselves, he can find them himself using psychic spider powers? Wouldn't that also be scarier instead of surveillance technology? He already does this with Cassie. 22. Why couldn't Ezekiel just try to talk to the girls, or try to persuade them to work for him, especially since he's rich and could easily hire them as employees or adopt them, thereby changing his future effortlessly? 23. Why does he think the reoccurring nightmare is an actual vision of the future? Anyway, people have reoccurring nightmares all the time. It doesn't mean people think they're actual visions of the future. 24. Why would Cassie get into a dangerous crashed car on the bridge accident to save someone? Isn't the main rule of EMTs and paramedics safety first? 25. How does Cassie get into multiple accidents in this movie as an EMT? How bad is she at her job? 26. Wouldn't her falling into the river in that car have killed her? 27. How did Ben Parker even get her out of such a situation? Did he dive in the water to save her? 28. The first times Cassie starts getting visions, why wouldn't she try to save her EMT friend played by Mike Epps? Even if her vision is possibly wrong, it's better to be safe than sorry. 29. How the hell did that truck crash into Mike Epps to begin with? It came from the closed off road from the fire that caused Cassie and everyone else to arrive at the scene. 30. If all three girls are linked to Cassie's life, Cassie saved Julia's stepmother and Anya is her neighbor, then why does Maddie, the rebellious black girl, 
have such a flimsy link to Cassie as flipped her off on the street one time. Couldn't they have made Maddie Mike Epps niece or neighbor or something? 31. Why are there like four or five different demonstrations of how Cassie Future Sight works? Wouldn't two be enough for the audience to get it? 32. The pigeon saving scene is fine, but why repeat that same demonstration of how her power works in the train with the girls? That's like the fifth time Cassie gets confused about the future visions by this point in the movie. 33. Why would the police immediately believe a well-dressed middle-class white woman would be kidnapping three girls at noon in New York City in broad daylight on a Saturday? They try to arrest Cassie without even asking any questions and immediately believe Julia in saying, Cassie is a kidnapper without assuming it's a prank or lie. 34. There were no eyewitnesses or phoned-in reports of a kidnapping, just one girl claiming it once, and no one knows Cassie is with the girls. So how did this become such major news so quickly, especially in New York City of all places, especially with three middle-class, non-rich, non-important, everyday New York girls? 35. If Cassie is suspected of kidnapping, why wouldn't she immediately go to the police to try to clear her name? especially since she knows she's innocent and they can better protect the girls. 36. Assuming all of the previous info got in the way of the plot, why couldn't the movie just write in a future vision of Ezekiel finding the girls at the police station and killing them there, along with several innocent police officers? That would give them a better explanation on why Cassie never goes to the police. 37. Why aren't the police searching for Cassie? They could easily find out her home and workplace given her occupation as a civil servant. 38. How is Cassie able to return home while suspected of kidnapping, let alone leave the country for an entire week, especially in New York City in 2003? 39. At any point, why doesn't Cassie or any of the girls call 911 to ensure the police they aren't kidnapped and don't need the police searching for them? That would at least explain why the police actually aren't searching for them. 40. Why would Cassie leave the three girls in the middle of the woods after just narrowly escaping a superhuman kidnapper trying to kill them, especially not giving them her cell phone number or home address or any way to contact her? Why wouldn't she think the superhuman killer could easily find the three girls unprotected in the woods? 41. Why would the three teenage girls trust Cassie to leave them out in the woods for four to six hours alone? Or for Cassie to assume three teenage girls would just stay put out there, especially with no food or water? 42. Why couldn't Cassie just take the girls back with her to her house? Why did she need to leave them alone at all, especially since apparently no police are looking for her? 43. Why would Cassie not think the girls would be safer with her since she can predict the future now? 44. Why would Cassie be so callous as to ditch the girls to begin with or suggest they go home to their parents when she is an EMT and it's literally her job to save people for a living? No decent EMT would pawn off people in danger when they're the only ones who can help them. 45. Why does no one ever think to call Cassie's 2003 cell phone or ask her what happened and why she is on the news for kidnapping, not even Ben Parker or the police? 46. While waiting in the woods, why couldn't one of the teenage girls, like Maddie, go to the diner alone and order three meals to go instead of all three going and risk missing Cassie's return or having Ezekiel find all three of them? And being dumb teenagers is no excuse. Self-preservation would kick in here since they were almost murdered mere hours ago. And even the police couldn't stop the murderer. 47. Why do the girls feel the need to publicly dance on tables while knowing someone is trying to track them down and kill them? 48. One of the writers said she set the movie in 2003 just as an excuse to use Britney Spears' single, Toxic in the movie 
for the diner and the Cassie taxi scene. But doesn't she know that you can use a song at any time after its release and that the movie doesn't have to be in the year the song was released? How do they even do a reference to Toxic without once drawing a parallel to spiders in a movie about super spiders? 49. How come the writer didn't know Britney Spears' Toxic didn't actually become a radio single until January 2004? The song is used on the diner radio in the movie, meaning the writer was too dumb to even learn when the song actually came out and only went by when Spears' album released rather than the actual single. In other words, the movie is set in the wrong year and should have taken place in spring 2004, like March, if they wanted an excuse to use Toxic on the radio. 50. How are the girls on the newspaper in what must have happened in the course of about nine hours, at the most? The train incident happens between 12 to 3 p.m., on a Saturday, because the girls aren't in school, and it's 8, 9 p.m. by the time they're at the diner. Newspapers don't work that way, let alone get distributed that quickly during the middle of the day. Plus, the diner is in New Jersey, or north of NYC, not even in the city. 51, how does the newspaper even have pictures of the girls on the front cover? If it's from surveillance footage, why wouldn't that have been used by the police to find the girls by now? If Ezekiel is blocking it using his NSA tech, how does the Daily Bugle have the pictures? Did a random photographer happen to be there, take pictures, sell them to the Bugle, and print a paper all within like six hours? 52. Broadcast television news was still a thing in 2003. Why couldn't they have just had a TV playing a news report of the girls missing, instead of the newspaper? Newspapers were in heavy decline, even in 2003. If it were to show off the Daily Bugle, they still could have shown the company as a news program or cable news channel. And why even use the Daily Bugle if not referencing J. Jonah Jameson at any point? 53. Why would anyone at the Redneck Diner even care about the three girls missing? especially if their supposed kidnapper, Cassie, isn't even with them. Especially if the girls are dancing on a table and don't look like they're in danger or kidnapped. Wouldn't someone at the diner at least be smart enough to tell the police they know the girls' whereabouts, but they look safe and unharmed? 54. How does Ezekiel's network now suddenly have the power to intercept and cancel out 911 dispatch calls? That was literally never established until now. It was only supposed to be a citywide CCTV network. Being able to hack into the entire police network of New York City opens up a whole new set of possibilities, not to mention couldn't go unnoticed by the police themselves. 55. Why wouldn't other police have heard the 911 call from the diner? Wouldn't a real dispatcher have heard the call first before Ezekiel could pretend to be an officer heading into the scene? Why would the dispatcher just trust some random voice pretending to be a police officer on the other end without following up or telling others at their station the update on the missing girls? It's heavily implied no other police were ever informed or updated on the three girls who went missing and managed to make front page news all within under 12 hours on the same day. 56. Cassie beats Ezekiel by hitting him with a stolen cab plowing through the diner. Why wouldn't Ezekiel be nimble enough to dodge the cab with his spider reflexes? 57. What are the extent of Ezekiel's powers? Does he have spidey sense or not? Is he as strong as Peter Parker or weaker? Is a cab enough to actually hurt him, but not as much as a normal man to the extent he's injured? Or is he strong enough to walk it off like the real Spider-Man would? His powers and their limitations are never explained. 58. Even in a rush, why would Cassie risk hurting innocent people and drawing more attention to herself by crashing a cab through the diner? 59. Why would Cassie take three supposedly kidnapped girls to a motel? If Cassie was male and going with three teenage girls to a hotel, this would be super inappropriate. 
60. How does Ezekiel's spider poison that Cassie got into her arm from Ezekiel not really play a part in the movie? Shouldn't there have been someone there to make sure the continuity is consistent throughout the script so that she'd be in pain from there on out due to the poison? The poison is almost never brought up again until the end. 61. Speaking of which, if the spiders can heal people from any illness, how does Ezekiel develop poisonous abilities? Are the spiders also poisonous despite them being able to heal people's illnesses? That wouldn't make sense. If they aren't, why does he now have spider poison powers? If the poison can be genetically modified to heal people, how would the Peruvian spider people have powers just from its bite? They aren't scientists or genetic biologists capable of altering its poison. If the poison has to be altered to go from being deadly to helpful, how do they use the spider instantly on Cassie's pregnant mom in the cave fountain? 62. Also, how do the spiders give people different abilities? Ezekiel and the Peruvian tribe all have discount Spider-Man powers, but Cassie can see the future. 63. Why aren't there any female characters with these discount Spider-Man powers? Does it differ by gender? Do only men become Spider-Man and women get screwed? If a baby gets powers through her mom's poison via utero, how does that develop into future sight? Shouldn't Cassie have gotten at least some of those powers as a baby, making her stronger and faster than the average human woman? Why wouldn't any of the Peruvian spider people or Cassie's mother know anything about how the spider powers manifest or why they differ per person? 64. In the future, the three spider women all have different powers. Magic web powers from Julia, advanced tech from Anya, and mechanical spider arms from Maddie. How did they get their powers? Were the Peruvian spiders involved? If so, why are all their powers different? Is Julia the only one with actual superpowers? 65. How does CPR help against an immunotoxin? Doing CPR won't get rid of the poison or anything. Cassie is still poisoned. Her heart may stop, but it doesn't mean the poison is cured. Also, medical experts pointed out Cassie is doing CPR wrong in the movie. 66. As asked before, how is Cassie able to leave the country for a week while being a wanted fugitive and kidnapper in post 9-11, 2003 New York? How are her passports and documents cleared for international travel? 67. Why would Cassie leave the country for an entire week to find out the true story of what her mother was searching for after Ezekiel has come after the girls twice now and almost killed them twice now? 68. Why wouldn't Cassie just go online or use information from her mother's journal to contact the Spider Jesus guy to get answers about her past? There was no reason she had to leave New York. Not that she would be able to, being wanted by the police. The mother's journal was their easy get out of plot hole free card right there. Just have all the answers be in the journal. 69. Why does Cassie leave the girls with Ben and Ben's nine-month pregnant sister? Again, couldn't she have taken the girls with her? Is she broke? 70. How is Cassie, as an EMT, reckless enough to leave the girls with Ben and Ben's pregnant sister, who Ezekiel could risk finding and also killing? Why would she risk their lives as well? 71. How is Ben not concerned about Cassie being a kidnapper of the three girls? Why does he never ask any questions about them? 72. How does Cassie leave the girls for an entire week without worrying about the girls' safety or ever calling in every few hours to check up on the... All the previous events in the movie prior to that happened in less than 12 hours. Now she'll be gone for seven days. That makes even less sense considering she never cleared her name with the police. 73. Why did it need to be a week anyway? Doing the math, it would take 16 hours for a round-trip flight from New York to Peru, and Cassie could sleep on the flight. Assuming she knew the exact coordinates to go to from her mother's journal, it would take maybe four hours round-trip for her to hike into the jungle from Lima and back. 
and the events with Spider Jesus could have lasted just four hours at the most, since they find her almost immediately. All of Cassie's trip to Peru could have been done in just 24 hours, not that she should have ever been able to leave the country to begin with. 74. Why couldn't Cassie just take the girls with her to Peru, especially knowing Ezekiel is after them in New York and none of them have any real family? 75. Why couldn't Cassie just permanently stay in Peru with the girls? Why even need to go back to New York, especially if the spider people could help protect the girls better than Cassie? 76. When Cassie is in Peru, wouldn't Spider Jesus have helped cure her of her poison? Why did Cassie never once ask them about her poisoned wrist, which should still be giving her pain during all of this? Also, how did her poison linger for a week without giving her any trouble? She was even able to hike into the jungle while a poison had. 77. Why couldn't the girls have gotten their spider powers here in the spider jungle? If Cassie actually took the girls with her there, which would have made more sense, this would have been the perfect spot to give them their superhero origin story. Why couldn't Spider Jesus have healed Cassie, then given the girls the strength to fight back, resulting in Ezekiel's self-fulfilling prophecy coming true and Ezekiel being the one to indirectly create the Spider Girls and cause his own future death? 78. Why couldn't Spider Jesus have just given Cassie one of their rare spiders, at least, so she can develop superhuman spider powers and stand a chance to stop Ezekiel? At the very least, why not give her one to take home so the spider can later be used on the girls in New York? 79. Why does Spider Jesus, Santiago, need to do the whole well thing to explain her mother? Couldn't he have just told her everything? explain the truth about her mother and how she was there to help cure Cassie pre-birth. They even could have done this with some kind of spider mind sharing technique, like Cassie already did with Ezekiel earlier in the movie. Why couldn't Spider Jesus and Cassie just share thoughts here? Why did it have to be this lame and forced time travel flashback experience? 80. When Mary Parker's water breaks in New York, why couldn't Ben have just left the three girls at home where they'll be safe? 81. Isn't having to worry about a pregnant sister and three teenage girls you barely know worse than just having to worry about your pregnant sister? 82. Why are they using the same cab Cassie stole a week ago at this point? How has no one noticed a stolen cab with no license plates parked outside a Brooklyn Queens house at this point? 83. How has no police questioned Ben or Mary about the whereabouts of Cassie Webb after nearly a week of her being a known kidnapper at this point? 84. How have the girls or at least Ben not told the police that they aren't kidnapped and are safe right now? so no one needs to worry about them. This has been an entire week Cassie has been gone. 85. Not all three of the girls are orphans, so how has Julia's step-parents not even called her yet, especially after the news and police involvement? 86. Couldn't the movie have saved a lot of time by just not making Cassie a known suspect at all? Maybe have a different reason the girl's whereabouts become known at the diner other than kidnapping suspects. The whole contrived kidnapping creates so many plot issues for Cassie and the girls. As stated earlier, just explain that Cassie will be putting innocent cop lives at risk if she takes the girls to the police and that she gets a vision of the girls needing to be the one to stop Ezekiel and no one else. Maybe make this vision pay off in the climax scene. 87. Why couldn't the third act have been Cassie and the newly spider-powered spider girls, sans costumes, coming back to confront Ezekiel before he kidnaps Ben and Mary Parker and use them as bait to draw out Cassie and the girls in an epic final showdown? You know, actually set up a superhero fight in this fake superhero movie? 
They could have even had it, so Ezekiel initially wins the fight in Cassie's vision, but Cassie uses her clairvoyance to change the outcome so that the girls win with her assistance. Wouldn't this also set up Ezekiel's dreams coming true as well? With the only difference being the girls aren't actual superheroes yet, so the dreams aren't a one-to-one -one comparison, but close enough to still be a self-fulfilling prophecy. 88. Why is the final act set in a Pepsi fireworks factory? Why do Pepsi own a warehouse full of fireworks? 89. Why is the same fireworks factory from earlier in the movie with Cassie's co-worker death still filled with dangerous fireworks? 90. Is this movie supposed to be near the 4th of July? Is this set in June 2003? It can't be because of the Britney Spears toxic reference. And that album came out November 2003, but the song came out a radio single in January 2004 anyway. 91. Why couldn't Cassie have now used her unlocked future sight to lure Ezekiel into a trap during the fireworks scene? It seems like that's what happens in the movie with the sign, but the sign falling on Ezekiel wasn't actually planned by Cassie. Cassie's plan was to escape in a paramedic helicopter, and she never had plans to kill Ezekiel. 92. How does Ezekiel survive several full-speed vehicle collisions with superhuman strength, but gets offed by a Pepsi Signs S? And again, shouldn't he be agile enough to dodge the sign or land on the ground on his feet? He was just leaping 20 feet into the air just a few scenes ago. Again, what are the limitations of his powers here? 93. How does Cassie's when you accept the responsibility great power will come, super astral projection powers even work? That's not even something Madame Webb can do in the comics. How does that BS just come out of nowhere? It also has nothing to do with seeing the future. It's just a deus ex machina. Couldn't Cassie have used her future sight to set up the girls beating Ezekiel in a way similar to Ezekiel's dream? Again, the self-fulfilling prophecy. 94, Cassie gets blinded by fireworks hitting her in the face while underwater. But how is her face unharmed except the fireworks blinding her? No burns or scratches to her face or anything. 95, how did she get paralyzed? Exactly, was it Ezekiel's spider poison? Did she injure her spine in the warehouse scene? Was it the firework that hit her? They never make it clear what specifically paralyzed her. 96. How did Cassie clear her name? Since she never told the police the truth of what happened, regardless of all that, how are her two carjacking and several property damage charges dropped? Cassie caused a lot of city damage and stole several cars in addition to what police thinks is a kidnapping of three girls. Literally none of this is ever addressed post-climax. 97. Why did Cassie's personality completely change after her accident to where she's now acting like an old, wise, eccentric woman? How did this character turn into comic book Madam Web overnight? This apartment scene isn't set years after Ezekiel's death. At most, it's only a couple weeks later. 98. What happened to the surveillance woman Ezekiel forced to control his surveillance system? Is Amaria free now, or is she also evil like Ezekiel and out for revenge? If Amaria was a victim, does she ever help Cassie by, say, taking over from the NSA woman, Constance, and using her network to get Cassie's charges dropped? If so, couldn't they have just added Amaria in the apartment scene to explain how she helped get Cassie out of legal trouble? If Amaria isn't a bad guy, wouldn't she have been a great asset to Madame Webb's team? especially if they wanted to go for the whole girl power angle here. 99. If Cassie can now fully see the future, does this mean she will do nothing to save Peter Parker's mother or Uncle Ben once Peter is a teenager? If she can now fully control destiny, why will she later go on to let Mary Parker, her husband, baby stepfather, and Ben Parker all die tragic, premature deaths? 100. Why does this movie even exist? Thank you for watching. I'm Dakota Johnson. Someone please save me from Hollywood.